America, bonjour, hi, Canada, greetings, I'm Hugh Hewitt, it's Friday, it's Friday, it's Friday, welcome to the weekend, it's still the weekend, even in this, the year of the plague, even as we go over 85,000 American dead, uh, we are still celebrating, we live in the country where you get to know the information, uh, and you get to be able to be prepared and not be soldered into your apartments like in Wuhan. The Chinese government, I think, in the biggest story of the day, and I will be asking National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien about this next hour. He's going to be my guest. uh, Is that, quote, China threatens sanctions on U.S. politicians for coronavirus criticism. That's right. Two United States senators, Tom Cotton and Josh Hawley, both heard here on this show. Two American representatives, Dan Crenshaw and... Uh, Chris Smith of New Jersey, Crenshaw of Texas, Chris uh, Smith of New Jersey both got threatened by the CCP. Other people referenced, Senators Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee, Martha McSally of Arizona, Lance Gooden of Texas. Frankly, if I were the president, I would invite all these people over to the the Rose Garden today and say, uh, China, China, you don't get to tell us what to do unless... President Obama's team comes back here. Then you can have your run of the White House again. That's what I would do. That's the biggest story of the day. I'll ask O'Brien, Robert O'Brien about that coming up. Let me do the biggest economic story of the day early. Normally I save this brought to you by birchgold.com. I do a business story of the day every day. And this is a big story. And it, it's another reason why you will want, let me check the price of gold. Uh, I mean, this changes throughout the day. It fluctuates throughout the day. Uh, but uh, as the morning unfolds in America, gold is at $1,742, up significantly from where it was on Monday. Overnight, Japan had a good night. England is in, uh, markets will be open until well after this show is over no matter when you hear it on podcast or whatever, if you're listening to it timely. The, the, up overseas, Germany and England are both up significantly. I don't know what American markets do in the course of a day. I'm off the air everywhere by noon, and, and uh, people listen to the podcast. Who knows? you got to check the market. It fluctuates. But what doesn't fluctuate is GDP German growth. German GDP shrunk by 2.2% in the first quarter. This is... This is the government that does everything whose holy grail is economic growth. They they don't ever let anything get between them and growing. It's their communist background. It's their their bitter war history. It's just who they are. What a shock. Angela Merkel going out for last year, going out in style. Uh, and the German bank is turning out to be the German bank and bullying the EU. I have tweeted out a headline that they are they are clearly going to make everyone else in the European Union suffer to make Germany's uh, landing as soft as possible. It's a good thing Boris Johnson got the United Kingdom out. It would be a good thing if you balanced your portfolio with some gold right away. The rest of the world is going to have a shaky 6 to 12 months. It'll be fine long term. I believe in the V-shaped recovery. The markets are coming back. But gold up to 1742. Send my name, Hugh, H-U-G-H, to uh, 474747. Would you please? 47, 47, 47. And diversify. Birch Gold Group has thousands of satisfied customers, countless five-star reviews, and they will help you roll over a portion of your IRA or they will let you buy gold, whichever way. Go to hugold.com. Let me also say I was very cheered yesterday. Well, a couple of things. I watched this great Bob Dylan. I didn't know Martin Scorsese did a uh, movie about Bob Dylan you know, 15 years ago. So Dylan is at the at the top of his game. He's a little bit old now to be doing TV, but he, he looks, you know, he's in his prime. He's in his uh, early 60s, mid-60s, maybe late 60s when he does this retrospective. So he has a lot to reflect on. And uh, it, it's No Direction Home is the name of it. And there are people like Liam Clancy in it that I've never heard. He said, remember uh, Bob. No fear, no envy, no meanness. That was Clancy, the great Irish tenor, talking to great Irish folk singer. I love that. No fear, no envy, no meanness. That should be the, it's the Hugh Hewitt show. That's my Twitter feed, by the way. And in that keeping, before I play you some Donald Trump on Fox Business yesterday, I got a note from a Supreme Court justice yesterday. Not one of the nine, but one of the 50 courts in the United States sponsoring a kid to prison fellowship. 
I'm very, very deeply grateful for this. Very deeply grateful. It's very tough when you have a, uh, a mom or dad in jail. Imagine you're a 16 year old man in the, in the Bed-Stuy neighborhood in Brooklyn. Now imagine your dad is in prison and on the main streets, people judge you based on your looks. I got stopped and fixed by cops a couple of times. And like, they only think of just because of the way I dress. I'm some, I'm a hood boy, or I'm in a gang, or I affiliate myself with gangs. But little did they know I take Brooklyn College classes. I have a, I have 40 credits as a junior. Like, I'm pretty good in school. Just because I dress, just because of the way I dress, they think that I'm a bad kid or something. It's not good to stereotype people. And not good to stereotype people, especially people who are not responsible for their parents' actions. You don't visit the sin of the mom or the dad on the kid. And so Angel Tree Prison Fellowship tries to get them to camp. They always send thousands of kids to camp. Some of those camps will be open this summer, some won't. Angel Tree will not forget any of these kids. They've got relationships with them. Some will go to camp, others will get a box of blessings, but it all depends on you calling 888-206-2764 or making a $200 donation to Prison Fellowship's Angel Tree right over at QHewitt.com. Donald Trump on Fox Business with Maria Bartiromo yesterday. Maybe the president will give $200 or Maria Bartiromo will. He, he talked about the overwhelming need right now, and I agree with him on this cut number one. So I want them to open when they can, when they want. The governors are opening them. Most of them are either opened or opening or considering it. Uh, I think that we have to get back to work. We have to get our country back. We have to take it back. It was artificially closed. Uh, I think we're doing incredibly well, considering the fact that we had the greatest economy, Maria, in history. You report it every morning. The greatest that anyone's ever seen, best job numbers, best stock market numbers, best everything. We had the best everything. And in addition to military being strong, all of the things we've done, and we had to just one day, boom, close it. We did the right thing, and now we got to get back. We got to bring our country back, and it's going to happen, and it's going to happen fast. We're going to, I call it a transition to greatness. You're going to have the third quarter. People are starting to get into that right now, but it's going to be a transition. That's a transition quarter. We're going to do well in the fourth quarter. And I think next year, with all of the stimulus, all of the things we've done, I think we're going to have one of the best economic years we've ever had. He's right. There's going to be some inflation, but I think he's right. He also laid out the Democrats' approaches. They politicized the pandemic for a reason. Cut number two. Do you think your critics want you to keep it closed going into the election? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's a it's a political thing in addition. Uh, I think because some they're states, saying you're putting money, uh, business ahead of lives. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I think the people that want to see the right thing happen, they agree with me. We have to get our country open. You know, it was up to some people. Let's keep it closed for a long time, okay? A long time. And watch the United States go down the tubes. Not going to happen. Never going to happen well, on my watch. Wanna... Not going to happen on his watch. Who's he running against? Maria Bartiromo asked. Cut number five. I'm running against the Democrats and I'm running against the media. I'm running against the radical left. I'm running against some really stupid Republicans that don't understand how good they had it because we have some Republicans. I'm at 95 or 96 percent with the Republican Party, but we have some people that claim to be Republicans and they've gone crazy. And the reason is I've defeated them all. You know, they were all my opponents and they've never gotten over it. Guys, Weaver and Schmidt, all losers. And they go out and they try buying commercials and you say, Gee, we've rebuilt our military. We've taken care of our vets. Our vets are in the best shape. You've never seen anything like it with the vets, you know, with, with choice, with everything else. We've done such a good job. And then you add the judges and you add protecting our Second Amendment. And what are these guys going to do? Support Joe Biden? And, no. the, you know, because Joe has been brought way left, way, way left. Way, way left. When we come back, he's also... Uh, as the New York Times said, what did Joe know and when did he, not the New York Times, the New York Post, I'm sorry. What did Joe know and when did he forget it? Okay, I'm coming right back. Robert O'Brien, National Security Advisor, China threatening our people. What's he going to say about that? Angel Tree needs your help. The banner is at HughHewitt.com. Don't forget as well, GivingMasks.com. Look, everyone's going to be wearing a mask for three to six months. Get them from GivingMasks.com slash Hugh. Feel good about the protection you provide yourself because when you do that, they'll send masks to people who need them as well. GivingMasks.com slash Hugh.